Welcome to GMP The Great, Glorious, and Glamorous, aka The Going North Podcast. I'm your host, best-selling author, and certified self-leadership trainer with the John Maxwell team, Dom Brightman. And this is the podcast where authors from around the world help you realize that success is tangible. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the High Live Real Builder for Authors, known as the Going North Podcast, it's the era of returning guests bit by bit, and we got a super special guest all the way back from episode, if I'm not mistaken, 33, my goodness, she's back and better than ever, and not better than ever, folks, because man, oh man, more certifications, new magical book, plans to move across the country, still kicking lots of arse and taking all sorts of names indeed. And not just in our CRM, because we got one heck of a guest for you today. Because this guest in particular, she's a motivated individual who's always striving to find innovative ways to bring support to others. She's received her master's in community counseling from Oklahoma State University. And she's also a licensed clinical professional counselor who specializes in PTSD, grief, and sexual trauma. And she's a founder, y'all. She found something. And she's the executive director of Inspiration Hope incorporated and the author of 11 tools to help manage the aftermath of trauma and types of grief and was a co-host on beyond clarity radio show on wtan 106.1 fm and is currently the creator of managing my grief podcast and yours truly had the honor of being a voice behind the introduction for that show so let's give it up for the returning superstar herself hashtag black girl magic level 99 miss tiffany dilworth Hi, it's great to see you, Dominique. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here on Going North Podcast. I'm excited this evening to be with you, to talk with you. It's been a while. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's been a while indeed with all the W's. Yeah, but yeah, thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited. Woohoo! That's right, with a <laughs> big old X. So welcome back, my goodness. So what's... So what's shaking? What's changed? Has been my goodness, 2018. So, oh wow, three years. Dang, that went by fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn. It did. Yeah, I think 2020 just kind of went missing because yeah, not much happened in 2020 with social distancing. But I decided to use my time wisely and wrote a second book, Types of Grief, during 2020. So that that kept me busy. What about you? How was your How was your 2020? Oh, there's some vision, all right. Yeah, there, there was some definitely some uh, 2020 vision. Yes, uh, screens everywhere. Got back into gaming. Uh, did some more business magical development. Contributed to a co-author book called From Crappy to Happy. Heck, even did my first ever audiobook project for someone else, and got some more cash back into the magical pockets to fund the show. So yeah, it's been pretty good. Awesome. Good deal. That's great to hear. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. A good deal indeed. Yeah. Some people kind of wish 2020 did go missing for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a very interesting journey. It was. And we're still still on the journey. Uh, the COVID-19 journey. Yeah, we're still experiencing it. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You can say that again. So my goodness, so you're one of the fabulous people who was able to turn some pain into power and use 2020 as a catalyst to join the business of immortality again for another entry the types of grief so with grief being one of your specialties was that your reason for writing this book in particular or was there another reason behind it yeah so um actually i started out doing workshops for people who was experienced grief and there are a lot of tools and information and techniques i gave but i wanted something more concrete for them to be able to go home and read for themselves and embrace. And so I decided to write types of grief. It was a fun experience. I really enjoyed it. Um, many times people don't realize that there are different types. They think grief is just grief, but yeah, there are different types. There's quite a few um, that I find to be interesting. Um, so for example, collective grief, which is what we're all experiencing right now with COVID-19. It's whenever a group of people are grieving together and just 
having to social distance, being able to not interact with our family the way we used to, not being able to see our loved ones and our friends and go places that in itself can be a type of loss people are experiencing. So it's something that's not happening just here in the United States, but worldwide. So this is a very unique time to be living in. And I decided, you know what, I want to share some tools, share some information with people who are experiencing grief and shed light on the griefs that aren't acknowledged. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people grieve quietly and silently behind closed doors. And I want them to have this book to let you know that you are not alone and that there are tools, there are things that you can do to help learn how to live after your loss. And so that's the story behind me writing this book that I am excited to share with you this evening. Oh yeah, because sharing is caring indeed. Step out the way, Bob the Builder. We got Tiffany Dilworth in the building because she's got a toolbox, y'all. That's right. Got a magical toolbox indeed. And you're so right about it. And thanks again for a copy of the magical book because when I opened it and I saw all the types of grief, I'm like, oh, shoot. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know there was more than 10. All right. <laughs> Let alone more than three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. A lot of us, we, we didn't realize that there are different types of grief. And you know, the amazing thing with just our minds, our human beings, we are always evolving. And so even though there are 15 different types of grief in this book, there are more types of grief that we're going to discover as time goes on. So I want to encourage people when they read this book, make sure you understand that this is not an all-inclusive book. There are many more types of grief that we're going to keep learning and discovering just throughout the years as we continue to communicate with each other and recognize that, hey, we all experience some of the same symptoms. Maybe maybe this is a category that we can develop and recognize that this is something that um, that a lot of people experience and we can come together and give each other support. So I'm excited for not just the information that I've learned, but also just the things that we're going to learn in the next many few years. I'm really excited about that. Oh God, there's more types of grief. <laughs> <laughs> you sound, you sound apprehensive. <laughs> You don't sound as eager as I am <laughs> to learn <laughs> about the different types of grief. <laughs> yeah. oh. You know, actually, it does remind me of something. Um, John James, he had made a statement. He said, we're taught how to acquire things, but we're not taught how to lose them. And so think about our society we live in. That is what we're taught, just get, get, get. But we aren't taught what happens when we lose things. What happens when we lose friendships, people, loved ones, jobs. Um, and so for me, thinking about this natural experience that happens in life, loss, that's something that we all experience. So for me to think about that, how natural it is, of course, grief is gonna follow. And I know a lot of people wanna stay away from grief, don't wanna talk about it, but it's a part of life. And so it's either we can try to run from it or we can say, you know what, I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to go on this journey and learn how to control my grief, learn how to manage my grief instead of it controlling me. Um, so I, I enjoy this topic of grief. I really do. And of course, there's some painful moments, definitely thinking about just my own experience with loss. Um, so I, I'm definitely not going to deny that. But at the same time, it's great to get to a place where we can experience peace and acceptance most of the time. And that's the ultimate goal. Whenever we experience a loss is to get to a place of acceptance and peace majority of the time. Ah, uh, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. And I love that quote that you mentioned because that was actually one of the th quotes I actually highlighted from the book because it was so powerful. We are definitely taught, especially in the US of A, it's like, hey, get all you can, maybe give all you yeah. can, but what happens when you lose it? Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We are taught that, um, how to get, but not taught how to how to experience loss. And so whenever I talk to any of my clients or anyone I do a workshop with, I always remind them that it is okay to not always know how to grieve. I know a lot of people, we say, man, I should be over this, or why am I still crying, or why am I still upset, or um, I should, I should, or we hear people tell us, you should be over this, or why aren't you, why aren't you over this yet? 
or let it go. That's a common one, let it go. But in reality, that's not how grief works. Grief doesn't work with just letting people go. They're, they're a loved one. There's someone that was in our heart, someone we had a connection with, and there's a break in that connection. And so we're just supposed to automatically forget about it. That's not reality. No, that's not reality at all. Um, instead, we should acknowledge that break in the relationship. We should acknowledge the loss that we've experienced and look at it as an honor, an honor to have been able to interact with that person, to experience that person and strive to find ways to let their life continue living on. I know for myself, my granddad, who was one of my best friends growing up, he passed away when I was in college. And when he passed away, I had experienced one of the darkest moments in my life. And I remember just feeling alone and feeling like nobody else understood. And as time went on, I slowly began to heal, began to accept that he's not here. And that was a challenge. It was, it was not easy. And so now I've gotten to a place where whenever I do certain events or I go certain places, I say something to him like, hey, I'm doing this on your behalf or I hope you, I'm making you proud right now. Um, so it's gone from a sadness, a deep, deep sadness and a longing for him to now doing things to try to make him proud, um, doing things that I know he would be happy for me to do. Um, so it's all about making that shift in, in the grieving process. And of course it takes time. Um, I'm not saying it happens overnight, definitely doesn't, um, but it, it does, it takes time. And so whenever people read types of grief at the end of each chapter, I intend to put in there a section for people to look through for coping skills, ways that they can learn to move from this place of longing and sadness. And for some people, even deep, deep depression depression and anger to this place of peace and acceptance and joy of being able to have interacted with that person and honoring that person in their life. Um, so it truly is a process that, that many, many try to avoid, but I encourage them to take baby steps to get to that other side. That's right indeed. That's right indeed. Definitely got to have those baby steps indeed. And sorry for the loss of your grandfather. It's definitely never easy to lose anyone you love especially mm -hmm. someone's a friend for basically your whole life especially yeah yeah for sure um and it, interestingly enough um that was a really tough couple of years um, because about a couple of years later my grandma my mom's life ended up passing away and um and that was a challenging moment as well um, and it's so so intriguing to me um, i'm very analytical um so my granddad passed away it was depression but when my grandma passed away, it was anger. And more recently, when my other grandma, my last living grandparent passed away, it was denial. And so a lot of people think that, all right, grief is grief, but that's not reality. In reality, everyone mourns differently. Everyone experiences differently because we have different relationships with different people. Um, and each one of them, had I had a unique relationship with each of them. That's why I had a unique reaction to each of them. Um, so I encourage people that if you're angry, if you're sad, if you're in denial, it's okay. Um, for, for people who might be around you saying, no, you have to grieve this way, it has to look this way, it has to look that way. Please grieve the way you want to grieve. Um, as long as it's in healthy um, aspects, definitely. Um, I always tell people whenever I go places um, or when people ask about, you know, what recommendations would you give? I always say, grieve however you think you need to grieve. If it ever gets to a, pla a place where you feel you are being unhealthy or you are being detrimental to yourself or others, then seek help. Um, and I always encourage people to go to Psychology Today. It is a great resource, again, Psychology Today. And they have a lot of great resources on there for articles, they have uh, resources as far as finding a mental therapist or a support group. If you don't want to do one-on-one, -on -one, there's quite a few support groups as well. Um, but yeah, it's all about us grieving the way we the way we need to grieve, not about someone dictating to us. And so the types of grief, um, it even gives a glimpse on how sometimes people will grieve. So for example, one of the types of grief that's mentioned is anticipatory grief. So anticipatory grief, that is whenever somebody is grieving someone who is still alive. And it's usually common for people who have chronic illness. So let's say someone's passing away from a certain illness, such 
such as cancer. It's the people who are still living. They're the ones who experience that anticipatory grief. And so when it comes to that specific grief, um, a lot of people unfortunately get overlooked. They're told um, or they're, they're asked, how's your partner doing? Or it's great that you get to see them the last few days. And it sounds encouraging, but in reality, we're missing the person who's grieving. More supportive, more empathetic statements would be along the wow, I, I can't imagine how hard it is for you to see your loved one slowly pass away. Um, so sometimes we miss the people who are grieving. Um, and so that's why I encourage to definitely look into types of grief, look into this book, because there are people around you who could be grieving. You yourself could be grieving and aren't even aware of it. There's another type of grief called mass grief. And that is when we don't grieve and unfortunately it ends up coming out in the form of a physical ailment. So sometimes people might get an ulcer or they might have start having migraines or they might have different body aches. And it's because that there's some grief, there's pain, there's hurt, there's sadness that they haven't worked with. And it has to manifest somewhere. It has to come out in some way, shape or form. And so it comes out in physical ailments. Um, and again, that's called mass grief. And so what ends up happening is they go to their doctor and they say, hey, doctor, I'm having this physical ailment. And the doctor runs test after test and they can't figure out what's going on. And thankfully in recent, in recent years, the medical field and the mental health field has collaborated. And so the doctors now say, hey, um, you know what? I've run tests and I can't figure out what's going on. Maybe it's maybe something mental or emotional going on with you. And that's actually how I get a lot of my clients referred to me through their primary care doctor. And we end up working through some of their grief and then those physical ailments end up going away because that's what they needed to focus on was that grief. And so again, I encourage people to please go check out my book, Mass Grief is something real, something that impacts a lot of people. Um, and you might even know someone who's experiencing mass grief and they're not even aware of it. So that's the benefit of educating ourselves in different areas because we can always give support to other people and even to ourselves. Oh yeah. You could definitely say that again. Heck, even mass grief, that was something I dealt with a few years ago myself and didn't even realize it because it kept on seeping out into different ways that other folks had to bring to my attention. So it's a, it's definitely a real thing. It's definitely a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It reminds me of a friend of mine. Um, he had experienced a loss and um, his came out in the form of anger. And so he was angry all the time, but he didn't recognize it. Um, and then people pointed out to him like, Hey, you're, you're getting kind of angry. Maybe you should go see, you know, some, some support from a mental health therapist. And he did start working through that grief and the anger slowly started decreasing. Um, so you're right. Many times we're completely unaware of how it's manifesting until somebody points it out to us. So it's great that you had some support systems. It sounds like who had enough camaraderie with you to say, Hey, Dominique, I need to go check out some things. So, so it's great that you had a good support system. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was almost like metaphorical six-pack abs. That's right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Love the metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yes, indeed, yes, indeed. And what I love about the book, not only the fact that it goes into the various types of grief, and the fact that it's not even <laughs> a complete list, which is like hilarious to me, which is still like amazing to me, is the fact that you actually acknowledge the fact that grief isn't always the loss of a loved one. It can always, it, it's just the plain loss of something. It's not always another person. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, think about it. When we hear somebody say, oh, that person's mourning or that person's grieving, what's the first thing we think of? oh, somebody must have died, somebody must have passed away. But there are different types of loss. Um, there's divorce, separation, that's a type of loss, a breakup. Um, there's loss of a job, which unfortunately a lot of people have experienced during COVID-19. Um, a loss of a roof over many people's head. Um, and for people who are um, experience chronic illnesses, there's a loss of body functions many times. Um, there's loss of um, for me, growing up, I was a military brat, and so we traveled a lot. 
we moved around every three to five years. So for me, there was a loss of friendships that I experienced. There's a loss of culture that I, I experienced. And so, um, yeah, I, I definitely encourage people to sit for a moment. Whenever I do my workshops, I have them. One of the first things we do is we sit for a moment and we list all of the losses we've experienced in life. And of course, some people will write down their loved ones, but a lot of people write down other things that we don't really think about. So for example, there's one workshop I was doing in Virginia. There is a, a woman there. She had shared that um, she had um, her, her brother had married a lady and um, she liked the lady. She liked her sister-in-law, but her brother ended up moving away. And so even though there's an addition to the family, she still experienced a loss because that connection that she had with her brother going places with him, it reduced because he ended up moving um, to where she, to where her sister-in-law was working at. So that's just an example of how loss can come in so many different forms. So it's important that we take the blinders off and saying grief is only associated with um, an actual death, but that's, that's not reality. Um, it's associated with any type of loss where you feel that you are deprived of something or someone. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And definitely got to acknowledge that. And it's so darn sure because, yeah, like, heck, even like someone moving, it's always a rough thing, especially because it's like, yeah, we can do the whole cyber closeness thing. You grab, a, grab a telephone, like, bring up on the phone or hop on Zoom or heck, even for those who still use Skype out there, the, <laughs> the very few out there. I didn't realize that was still a thing, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's still a thing yeah funny enough did an interview with a guy out in california they were using skype i was like oh wow okay all righty interesting and um just really just acknowledging the fact that hey even though they are still alive it still can hurt in the wake it's like oh crap no not the physical closeness no it's gone now i gotta find a new job oh crap now i gotta find some new hobbies or find a person who can I can actually resonate with and hang out with indeed. So with loss, you actually even offer tools in the book too. So it's not you're just presenting the issues that folks are dealing with, like a problem. You actually offer up multiple ways and solutions for folks to actually tap into and actually add to their life to try to deal and manage the pain. Yes, yes. Actually, I have a whole chapter filled with coping skills. Um, yes, um, ways to cope with grief. And that was a lot of fun putting that list together. Of course, it's, there's so many more um, types of grief or types of way, ways to cope with grief, um, a whole lot more than that list, but it's a grounding place. It's a foundational place, hopefully, for a lot of people to, to start with. Um, again, going back to those baby steps, doing those little things each day. Um, one of the main things that I encourage people to do whenever they're starting their grieving process, trying to experience healing, is to first take care of yourself. That is the key thing. Because um, sometimes people get caught up in work and they focus in work or they focus in um, distracting themselves with TV, social media. And sometimes you have to slow down and say, you know what, let me, let me do some self-care. Let me just simply take care of myself. Did I eat today? Did I get enough sleep? Did I do some type of physical exercise? Um, so I do encourage people in, in the book to make sure that they're embracing some healthy activities during their healing process. Um, because sitting down watching TV 24 seven and trying to distract yourself isn't helping our healing process. Um, it's beneficial sometimes, but doing that consistently, it's, it's not always healthy. And I even tell people too much of a good thing can also be unhealthy. Um, so for example, let's say somebody is um, saying, all right, you need a certain amount of hours of sleep and they sleep too long, so long that they end up missing work uh, multiple times. So sometimes healthy things can need to be done in moderation. I'll put it that way. Healthy things need to be in moderation. But yeah, there's so many different coping skills I put in there. Um, I know for me, one big one was volunteering. So that was something that my granddad used to do. He used to volunteer, give his time to the community. And I volunteered as well. And that helped me to get out of that sad place, being able to help others, being able to see others face light up when I hand them a backpack filled with school items. 
there's a program here uh, in Maryland where we create backpacks and give them to homeless children. And it's, it's an amazing experience to see their face light up. Um, same with my nonprofit organization, Inspirational Hope. It's amazing to be able to go to a workshop. Well, when things were open, we did workshops in person. Um, and it was amazing to see the women and the men that came to the workshops and hear how the information they received and the support they received was what they needed to help them in their healing journey. So for me, volunteering was a big one. Um, there's a book called The How of Happiness. And in this book, I love, I love The How of Happiness. If you haven't read it, please go read it. I know I'm promoting my book, but I also want to promote this book as well, The How of Happiness. And so in the book, the doctor talks about how 60% of our level of happiness is out of our control. So 60% of our happiness is based on genetics, is based on how we're raised, is based on our experiences that we've had in life. But 40% of our level of happiness is based on what we do or don't do. So if I choose to embrace thankfulness, if I choose to embrace this present moment of experiencing life, if I choose to embrace volunteering, that increases my level of happiness. Um, so that's something that I like to share with all the people who I go to workshops with that I do workshops for is to be aware that 40% of your level of happiness is based on what you do or don't do. Um, and, and in the book, I talk a little bit about the how of happiness um, as well. But um, another thing is reading. Reading can be so helpful. Reading something inspirational. Some people have um, mantras that they say every morning or some people have affirmations that they say that's helpful to them. And so I encourage people to embrace that um, and speak it to your life, speak those things that you want into your life every day so it is manifested. And the last couple of coping skills that I can remember that I put in the book was um, simply creating a memory of them that was joyful, that was pleasant, and then writing about it. And some people they'll write about it. Other people, they might share it with another person. And it's something beautiful about being able to share an experience you had with a loved one. And that person taking that information and letting it live through them. Um, so for example, um, there's a support group that I used to do a few years ago. And what we did was we all gathered recipes of our loved one and we shared it with each other. And we would talk about, you know, this is where this recipe came from. This is the memory I had associated with this recipe. And so I remember one time we came back from group um, a couple of weeks later and one of the group members shared that they had utilized one of the recipes and they talked about how great it was for the family to sit around the table and they ate their food and it was delicious. And I remember seeing the person who lost a loved one who shared that recipe they were filled with so much joy, realizing that, hey, my loved one is living on through somebody else. Um, they're experiencing the things that my loved one shared with me, this recipe. And I know it sounds small, but, but it's something special whenever you see your loved one living on um, in other people's lives. And so again, a whole chapter filled with coping skills, filled with resources to help you along your healing journey. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, Bob, the builder got to move out the way. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> yes, indeed. And especially right about the small things. Like, hey, like, even though it may seem small to someone else, they can be really, really big to the people that it really matters for. Like, hey, sharing a recipe with someone else. And um, especially depending on the family, what type of recipe it is. My goodness. Like, the... <laughs> <laughs> the, the grandmothers they say hey if I tell you I have to kill you and they were serious about it they gonna take that one thing to the grave with them yes yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> exactly it's like hey there's a there's a secret about the sweet potato pie that makes it better than any other sweet potato I've tasted like what makes it different if I tell you I have to kill you <laughs> oh, okay then. All right. Uh, thank you for the pie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you're right. There are some secrets that people do take with them to the grave because they don't want people to know. Um, 
but I think it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when people share stories with each other um, about life experiences they had with their loved one. Oh yeah, that's right, the power of stories indeed. So, since this is far from your first rodeo and you're on the guest side of the game for the evening, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're in a metaphorical hot seat? Yes. One question I would like people to ask, and even ask themselves, it's about their support system. Do they think that their support system is helping them or causing them to feel ashamed, causing them to feel that they are grieving wrong? That is something that I would definitely like people to ask more often to themselves and to who's ever helping them or supporting them. Are you truly helping me right now? Or are you causing me to fall deeper into pain and hurt and sadness and feeling isolated? Um, or are you helping me to come out of my shell? Are you helping me to embrace this pain and get to the other side of acceptance and, and peace? Um, so that's probably the main question I would say I, I wish more people would ask themselves and, and other people. Are you truly a healthy person in my support system? Uh, there we go. Definitely a great question indeed. Heck, even reminded me, I, I forgot the exact study and exact article, but it was some some article. Heck, it might even be in Psychology Today. It was talking about the loneliness problem in America because it's mm -hmm. become so career-focused and folks talk about self-care is that sometimes uh, self-care and folks may be like, hey, I don't want to go out peopling or they may tend to avoid people because a lot of folks are doing the whole solo thing and like to be more introverted than usual and all that other stuff that they forget to actually have a support system so i'm actually glad you mentioned that so any advice for those out there for creating that support system yeah one of the first things is first figure out what is it that you need i know that's one of the things i do with a lot of my teens was whenever they're struggling with something, I ask them, what is it that you need from your parents? Do you need a hug? Do you need a joke? Do you need some ice cream? What is it that you need? And once you're able to figure out what is it that you need, then you can figure out which parent you can go to, um, which sibling you can go to, to get that need met. So it's the same thing for us adults. Um, when we're struggling with something, it's just pausing for a moment. What is it that I need in this moment? In this moment, I just need someone to sit with me, not talk, not ask questions, just sit in silence with me. Or I need someone to give me a hug right now. So first identifying what is it that you need and then find those people who can meet that need. Ah, uh, yes indeed, yes indeed. That's right, that analytical mind at work with the self-awareness, that's what I'm talking about indeed, it is so true. So self-awareness is also required too and Seeking out that support system, knowing how you tick, so that way you don't tick off other people. Right. That's important too. Yes, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> that is very important. Yeah. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive for round two. And considering the topic of the show to be an interesting question... So you're called to give the final keynote address of your life, but the thing is you're going to be speaking to all 8 billion people on the planet Earth. Literally all 8 billion people are going to have their eyes on you for 90 minutes. What is the message that you're going to give to them, and what would the main points of that message entail? Yeah, that is a deep question. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, considering what we're talking about right now with grief, the thing I would probably tell people is to live your life, enjoy every moment. Yes, we can get focused on past experiences and we can learn from past experiences. We can take those special moments and put them deep in our hearts, but don't forget to live in the present moment as well. Live in the here, the now, smell the flowers while you're able to smell the flowers, give the flowers while you're able to give the flowers. And the last component I would share is Plan for your future. Try to think of the things that you have always wanted to do while living and make plans to do them. Make plans to accomplish those things, whether it is to write a book or to come on this amazing Going North podcast to talk with Dominique. Create your goals for the future and go for them. Um, it reminds me of a, a, a statement a friend of mine in college once told me, 
um, I was talking about to him about the things I wanted to do um, as far as traveling to different places. And he said, why not? Why can't you? And it's so true. I mean, we are our own limit. And so don't put limits on yourself and just, just go for it. And things will work out. Woo! And the mic drop, baby. Explosion, baby. Woo! <laughs> yes, <indeed>. yes. <laughs> Oh, yes, indeed. There you go. And now it'll be recorded and played for ages to come. That's right. <laughs> well, definitely solid advice right there. Definitely rock solid indeed. Definitely keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And for keeping things in mind, they need to keep you on top of their mind if they need to refer some people to you or come to you for that wonderful counseling indeed so for those who want to keep in contact with heck even buy a bunch of copies of both of your books heck maybe even a future book to come what's the best way to keep in touch with you and learn more about the terrific tiffany yeah definitely um so types of grief is located on lulu amazon and barnes and noble um same with my other books um 11 tools to help manage the aftermath of trauma and that's mainly geared towards people who's experienced sexual assault and some coping skills and tools to help with the healing process with that. And so also we have a Facebook group. We started it this year. We are excited. It's called Managing My Grief. Please go check it out on Facebook. Um, we talk about coping skills. There's some videos in there and it's all about us coming together and supporting each other. So for those that may not have a support system, we have it for you on Facebook. Um, again, that is Managing My Grief Facebook group. We are also on Twitter always posting some amazing information. Um, and it's my name, Tiffany Dilworth. And then I also have a website, uh, a personal website, if you do want support um, for just information or um, even therapeutic services, um, you're more than welcome to visit my website, missdilworth.com. Again, that is missdilworth.com. And then if you're like, you know what, I want to talk to you Today, immediately, directly, you can send me an email. It is my name, tiffany.dilworth at yahoo.com. And then, of course, if you are interested in workshops, which we have going on, um, actually, we just had one a couple of weeks ago. It was an amazing toolbox, 30 tools, uh, the ultimate toolbox. And the website for that, if you want to do a future workshop or attend a future workshop, it is managingmygrief.net. Um, again, managingmygrief.net. And I want to say thank you so much, Dominique. I have had an amazing time talking with you as usual. Um, so thank you so much for having me on Going North. I appreciate that. Woohoo! And I appreciate you too, indeed. Yes, indeed. Appreciate you. That's right. Hashtag Miss Fabulous right here. That's right. <laughs> and Tenacious doing that work, that good work indeed. So you heard it, folks. Check out all of her wonderful stuff that she just listed. It'll all be in the show notes as well. Check it out. If you're looking for that support, she's your gal. She's got you covered like a blanket indeed. So any parting words before we close up shop? Yes. I hope you all have an amazing day and consistently strive to live in your greatness. Hey, 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 you super special, awesome human. Thanks a bunch for listening to this podcast episode. Hope you really enjoyed it as much as I did in terms of the conversation with this awesome guest you just got done listening to. Be sure to subscribe to this show if you haven't already because more greatness is coming your way. And if you're so inclined, be sure to share with at least three other people in your network so that way more folks can catch the fire that is on the Going North podcast. Keep winning at life and advance others to advance yourself.